front facing or rear facing? Not sure what's best? My grandson's story may help you decide. This is my youngest grandson, Joel, at 18 months old. And this is the hardest story I've ever had to tell. On August 30th, Joel and his mom were in a front impact car crash. Joel was in a front facing car seat. Mom always strapped him in good and tight. She kept him in the rear seat so he'd be safe. We never knew that front facing children have a 75% greater chance of injury than rear facing children. When a child is in a front facing car seat, their body is held in place by the straps or the harness. But the head and the arms are thrown violently forward with tremendous force, stressing, stretching, or even breaking the spinal cord. A young child's skull can be literally ripped from her spine by the force of a crash. This is often described as internal decapitation. Joel was a big boy at 18 months and 33 pounds, well over the minimum of 12 months and 20 pounds of when you can turn your child front facing. And this is what happened to my grandson. Joel broke his neck. Why? Because at impact, Joel's head was thrown violently forward, snapping his neck. Sure, his body was strapped in, and the car seat did its job, but front facing, there is no restraint for his head or neck. The forces applied to the necks of a forward facing child can cause the spinal cord to stretch up to two inches. But a spinal cord only needs to stretch a quarter of an inch to break. That would cause total paralysis, or even worse, death. Now watch the crash test of a rear-facing child. Notice how they are cradled in the car seat, supporting the head and the neck. In a front impact crash, a rear-facing car seat takes the bulk of the force and passes very little along to the child. With a child in a rear facing car seat, the head, neck and spine are all kept fully aligned. Studies show that children in forward facing seats were more than four times as likely to be injured in side crashes. The longer a child can ride rear facing, the better protected his or her spinal cord in a collision. To turn a child front facing is not mandatory, it's not even recommended. You're greatly increasing their chances of serious injury. Not only did Joel break his neck, but his shoulders were severely bruised by the straps, leaving him unable to use his arms. With a team of skilled surgeons in the hands of God, Joel's neck was repaired and his spinal cord was intact. Just a few weeks earlier, he was at his mom's birthday, helping himself to some cake. A few seconds can change everything. Don't think it can't happen to you. There are many convertible car seats to accommodate children rear-facing up to 35 pounds that could prevent these injuries. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends for optimal protection the child should remain rear facing until reaching the maximum weight for the car safety seat as long as the top of the head is below the top of the seat back. The odds of severe injury to forward facing children 12 to 23 months old is five times greater than children in rear facing car seats. Many European countries such as Sweden keep children rear facing up to four years old and 55 pounds. We found out too late, if he was in a rear facing car seat, this would not have happened. Joel will be involved in intense physical therapy for the next year, working to regain the use of his arms and legs. Doctors say he is truly a miracle.
you're still not sure which way to face your child in a vehicle, just remember these two photos. can't prevent a crash, but you can prevent this type of injury. Keep your child rear-facing as long as you can.